to handle it for tonight. So please join me for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance, allegiance to, to the flag of the United, United States, States of America and, and to, the to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, one nation under, under God, indivisible, indivisible with, with liberty, liberty and justice for all. all. Thank you. Roll call, please, Yana. Councilmember Glazer. Yes, ma'am. Councilmember Johnson. Here. Councilmember Stanfield. Here. Pro Tem Trent. Here. Long. Here. Thank you. So tonight's a little bit different in the sense that in order to take public comment, we're going to have you call into a conference phone. So if you'll pay attention as we go through the agenda, if you want to make a call, make sure that you are on the item and be prepared as soon as the council stops talking and says that we are now gonna take public comment, please call right away because we're not gonna sit and wait for five minutes. We're gonna wait 45 seconds, 60 seconds. And if no one has called, we're gonna move on. So please have that number in front of you. It is 725-1484. And I'll remind you as we go that that's how we're gonna handle public comment tonight. So we do have one presentation proclamation for, I just buried it, for National Public Safety Telecommunicators Week, April 12th through the 18th, 2020. Whereas emergencies can occur at any time that require police, fire, or emergency medical services and public safety dispatchers are the first and most critical contact our citizens have with emergency services. And whereas public safety dispatchers are the single vital link for our police officers and firefighters by monitoring their activities by radio, providing them information and ensuring their safety. And whereas the safety of our police officers and firefighters is dependent upon the quality and accuracy of information obtained from citizens who telephone the Fortuna Police Department Communications Center. And whereas the city of Fortuna is served by a group of men and women working as public safety dispatchers for the law enforcement, fire, rescue, and medical emergency response agencies in this community. And whereas the dedicated individuals work tirelessly to answer our citizens' calls for help and dispatch the first responders to the scene of those emergencies. And whereas these public safety dispatchers have demonstrated loyalty, commitment, and dedication in the performance of their duties. And now therefore be it resolved that the public safety dispatchers working in the city of Fortuna are a valuable asset to our community at large. These professionals who toil with little recognition 24 hours a day, seven days a week to save lives and provide assistance are unsigned heroes. Be it further resolved, it is for these reasons that the city council of the city of Fortuna wishes to honor them and proclaim April 12th through 18th, 2020 as National Public Safety Telecommunicators Week in the city of Fortuna. The City Council of the City of Fortuna appreciates their commitment and dedication to their profession and congratulates them on a job well done. Signed this sixth day of April in the City of Fortuna, the state of California. So if we were doing this in a live meeting, we would now present this um, proclamation to the dispatcher supervisor. Since we are not doing that, he has sent his um, comments that he would have shared with us and Jeremy's gonna read those. Yeah. Um, the Dispatch supervisor shared a note that says, on behalf of our public safety dispatchers, I'd like to thank the council for recognizing the city's real first responders. These men and women are the first person our citizen may talk to during some of the most uh, worst moments of their lives. These dispatchers also provide the most needed critical lifeline to keep our police, fire, and medical personnel safe in the field. I'd like to take a moment to share some statistics from our communication center. Our center serves as the primary public safety answering point for the cities of Fortuna, Rio Dell, and Ferndale. They provide dispatch service for these three cities as well. Additionally, they provide the dispatch for Fortuna Fire District, which covers a large portion of the Eel River Valley, including Hydesville. In the last 12 months, our com communication center has handled 30,462 police-related incidents and over 800 fire incidents. In the last 12 months, they have handled 40,072 administration calls and 6,906 911 calls. One additional note I'd like to mention is that our team of dedicated police, uh, public safety dispatchers far exceeds the national standards related to the answering 911 calls and our community should be proud. The national standard 
requires that we answer 90% of our 911 calls within 10 seconds. In the last 12 months, our dispatchers have answered 99.3% of these calls in less than 10, 10 seconds, well exceeding the standard. Uh, respectfully submitted Sergeant Charles Ellibrecht from the Fortuna Police Department. Thank you, Jeremy. Thank you, Charles. Our interim chief, Mike Downey, also had some comments, and Mike Johnson is going to read those for us. Thank you. Yes, Chief Interim Chief Mike Downey sent these comments. Uh, National Public Safety Telecommunications Week was originally created to raise public awareness of the hard work and dedication of public safety telecommunicators. I want to thank the city of Fortuna for this recognition by proclaiming this week in honor of the hardworking and dedicated dispatchers at the Fortuna Police Department. These unsung heroes continually serve the community by being that vital link between the community and the officers that respond to calls for service on a daily basis. The Fortuna Police Department public safety dispatchers are responsible for gathering accurate information and then relay the information to the officers in the field. Much of the time a dispatcher is relaying information while dealing with other calls for service at the same time. And in some instances, the nature of the call is the difference between life and death. I appreciate the proclamation presented by the city of Fortuna tonight and extend my gratitude to our public safety telecommunicators for their dedication and attention to detail. Signed, thanks again from Chief Mike Downey. All right, so a special thank you going out to all of our dispatchers and first responders tonight. We are going to pause for a minute now and take public comment. If you would like to address the council on any item that is not on the agenda, you can call in to 725-1484 and share your comments with the council. We're gonna pause for about a minute. If no one calls, we will move on. All right, having no public comment, we will move on to our consent calendar, which consists of two items, the city council minutes from March 16th and the report of disbursements. Does anyone wish to pull anything? I don't need to pull anything, but I'd like to make a comment. Okay. I appreciate that on the, deport, the report of disbursements that on some of the refunds and so forth, they have notation of COVID-19 and it'd be interesting to see a report regarding those final totals once this epidemic is passed. Okay, so we need a motion to approve the consent calendar. Motion to approve the consent calendar. Second. We have a motion and a second. Roll call vote, please, Yana. Council Member Glazer. Yes. Council Member Johnson. Yes. Council Member Stanfield. Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Trent? Yes. Mayor Long? Yes. Our first item for city business is to ratify the city proclamation confirming the existence of a local emergency in response to coronavirus COVID-19, resolution 2020-12. We have a staff report. Yes, we do. So staff's recommendation is that the council adopt resolution 2020-12 confirming the existence of a local emergency and ratifying the city manager, director of emergency services proclamation of existence of a local emergency in response to the COVID emergency dated March 20th, 2020. California government code section 8630 and ordinance 
Dash 611 of the city of Fortuna empowers a city manager um, as a director of emergency services to proclaim the existence or threatened existence of a local emergency. On March 20th, in my capacity as the city manager and director of emergency services, I proclaim the existence of a local emergency in the city of Fortuna in response to the COVID-19 virus. The city may require additional assistance in the future and a formal declaration of the emergency allows, may allow additional resources to flow the city in a timely fashion. The declaration may also allow needed flexibility in staffing decisions and steps needed to continue to deliver essential services and protect the city's residents. To date, we have done a number of things to adjust our operations to minimize the potential exposure of, of city staff and the public to the coronavirus, including the following um, items. We've been keeping essential employees working and providing continuity of service for water, wastewater planning and building, parks and police services. We've been following public health orders and canceling events and gatherings at city facilities. We've been closing city hall to close city hall to the public, except for planning and building appointments and police emergencies. We've been limiting payment methods to our finance department to online means or by phone with credit card, or for them to be placed in a drop box to minimize the potential for community transmission. We've allowed we were allowing payment plans for water and sewer if requested by citizens, and canceling shutoffs until this emergency is over. We're allowing staff to work remotely and providing them the equipment necessary to do so as consistent with the public health orders uh, for this emergency. Um, we've moved our police dispatch to an offsite location to avoid potential exposure to our dispatchers from the coronavirus and others from others in the department and potentially, which could potentially compromise our dispatch capability. We're also staggering shifts to create redundant crews so we have a fully functioning crew of one unit gets infected and is forced to isolate. We're doing this for many departments, including police, water, wastewater, utilities, and general services. We're adapting transit to better serve our seniors, and I've also included some pickup and drop off of food and medicinal supplies for our seniors as a part of our transit service. We've taken the initial steps to develop an emergency fund to provide gap funding in businesses in gap funding to businesses in the city that are affected by the emergency. That is one of the items that's on the council agenda tonight. We're also following state and federal orders to protect public health and implement all necessary and required measures. Um, we've also been participating in county OES briefings and will modify our response as needed to protect the public in this emergency. So at least every 21 days after the proclamation of a local emergency and until the emergency is terminated, the city council is required to review the continuing need for a local emergency and shall terminate the local emergency at the earliest possible date conditions warrant. Municipal code also designates the city manager as a director of emergency services and the police chief as the assistant director of emergency services. This provides each this, the director and the assistant director to the latitude to make decisions during the course of the emergency to respond quickly. No actions have been taken thus far that would typically require a council approval where it has not been sought and no extraordinary authority is currently expected to be needed. However, it is unknown what may be required in the future as this emergency continues to develop. Staff will make every effort to have the council provide decisions as typically would be done to the extent possible. With that, staff recommends confirming the existence of a local emergency in response to the coronavirus and adopting resolution 2020-12. Thank you, Merritt. Does anyone have any questions or comments for Merritt? Nope. Hearing none, we will now open it up for public comment. If you want to comment on this item, please call 725-1484. We'll pause for a minute and wait and see if anyone calls in.
and you're on. Yes, my name is Walt Wilson. I'm a resident of Fortuna. Mm -hmm. Yes, my name is Walt Wilson. I'm a resident of Fortuna. Um, I would like to thank our hardworking city manager, Merritt Perry, for donning yet another hat, uh, namely director of emergency services. He seems to be the busiest man I have ever seen, and we thank him for his hard work. And that's my comment. Thank you. Thank you, Walt. Thanks, Walt. Thank you. If anyone else would like to call in, please do so now at 725-1484. All right, we are going to um, close public comment and move on to our motions. I make a motion. We approve resolution 2020-12 and read by title only. Second the motion. We have a first and a second, Siana. Resolution 2020-12, a resolution of the city council of the city of Fortuna declaring a state of emergency due to COVID-19. Council member Bowser. Yes, ma'am. Council member. Yes. Council member Stanfield. Yes. Mayor pro tem trend. Yes. Mayor Long. Yes. All right. Thank you. Our next item is approved the amended and restated. Agreement. Staff report, please. So there was a little feedback, so I'm, I'm just going to read the item name again, which is to approve the amended and restated joint powers agreement of the Humboldt Transit Authority and authorize the city manager to execute the agreement. And that is staff's recommendation. Um, the restated, amended and restated joint powers agreement of the Humboldt Transit Authority is included with the staff report as attachment one. The amended JPA includes language that allows the HTA to hold quarterly meetings instead of monthly and special meetings on the first Wednesday of the month as necessary in an effort to reduce meeting frequency and the number of unnecessary meetings. All right. It allows the Humboldt Transit Authority to provide transportation outside of the county to connect citizens to the national bus work rather than limiting to them to in-county trips. It allows for funds to be expedited for payroll and monthly invoices by designating the HTA finance manager as the treasurer and the HTA general manager as the auditor controller. A copy of the amended and restated JPA is in the council package as is a copy of the HTA resolution 20-04 approving the amended and restated JPA. Staff recommends the council authorize the city manager to execute the amended and restated joint powers agreement of the Humboldt Transit Authority. That concludes my staff report. Thank you, Merritt. Does anyone have any comments or questions? All right, hearing none, we'll open it up for public comment. Please call 725-1484 if you would like to comment on this item.
All right, we didn't receive any calls, so we will move for a, on to a motion. I'll make a motion to approve and authorize the city manager to execute the amended and restated joint powers agreement of the Humboldt County or Humboldt Transit Authority. Second. We have a motion and a second, Siana. Council Member Wazer. Yes. Council Member Johnson. Yes. Council Member Stanfield. Yes. Mayor M. Trent. Yes. Mayor Long. Yes. Thank you. Our next item is a public hearing to consider amendments to the Fortuna Municipal Code, Title 17 Zoning Regulation, adding 17.06.184.5 short term rentals, Ordinance 2020 742. This is the second reading. So, staff's recommendation is to receive the staff report and accept public comments for the amendments to Title 17. The zoning regulations of the Fortuna Municipal Code, adding section 17-06-184.5 and hold the second reading. Um, this is the second reading of the amendment to the Municipal Code to allow for the establishment of short-term rental standards. The first reading was held at the City Council meeting of March 16th. The Council also held a pub public meetings for general discussion and public comment on January 21st and March 2nd. In addition, the Planning Commission held a public hearing on February 11th at which they recommended the Council adopt the short-term rental ordinance. At, at the first reading of the ordinance on March 16th, the Council requested modifications to the ordinance. The changes have been made and are shown in the ordinance attached to the staff report and are in bold. The first change included a requirement for liability insurance at the time of application and the elimination of the notification of the City upon insurance policy changes. The second change requires a parking evaluation to be submitted with the short-term rental and that parking be appropriate rather than a defined number of spaces per bedroom subject to approval of the and subject to the approval of the community development director which is also the city manager at this time the ordinance attached is attached to the staff report and includes these changes that reflect the council's direction and with these changes it's ready to complete the second reading if adopted, the short-term rental ordinance will allow the city to collect fees relating to transient occupancy tax and business license fees. Staff is recommending that the council adopt this ordinance and amend the zoning regulations to allow short-term rentals. With that, that concludes my staff report and I'd be happy to answer any questions. Thank you, Mayor. Any questions? Hearing none, we'll open public comment. Once again, 725-1484. All right, we received no public comment, so we will close public comment and move on to a motion. Madam Mayor. Well, the second reading of Ordinance 2020-742. Second the motion. Siana, we have a motion and a second. Ordinance 2020-742, an ordinance of the City Council of the City of Fortuna, adopting a short-term rental ordinance by amending Title 17 zoning regulations of the Fortuna M Municipal Code, adding Section 17.06.184.5 short-term rentals. Council Member Glazer? Yes. Council Member Johnson? Yes. Council Member Stanfield? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Trent? Yes. Mayor Long? Yes. Thank you, Siana. 
Our next item is to authorize the city manager to execute a professional services contract amendment with GHD for $27,190 for the National Pollution Discharge Elimination System Permit Compliance Project. Staff report. So this is um, another task in the ongoing long-term project to, for the city to comply with its National Pollution Discharge Elimination System Project. This is the last phase and scope of work that we anticipate awarding to GHG on the existing contract they've been working under for this project. We um, had hoped to include this in their last contract amendment, but we were still working on defining the scope of work in the area and we didn't have that in time to include. So that's why it's coming as a separate item. The special studies being requested as a part of this item are to support the CEQA document and include a wetland delineation report and a botanical survey and report. And these are primarily for the area across the river where the city's considering doing the groundwater re recharge with its treated wastewater. These studies are being recommended to co be completed now rather than including them as part of a future contract to avoid extending the schedule of the overall project and to allow the city to, com to complete the CEQA portion of the project. The next phases of the project will be subject to competitive selection and will include final design, preparation of bid documents, and environmental permitting. The proposed maximum fee for the, the scope of work is $27,190. This effort would be paid for from Fund 560, the Wastewater Capital Fund, which is within the $1 million budgeted for the current fiscal year. And the CIP project number for this work is 0171. A copy of the draft amendment is attached in the staff report along with the proposed scope of services from GHD. With that, staff authorizes the city manager, staff recommends that the council authorize the city manager to procure, oh, let's see. Um, staff is recommending that the council authorize the city manager to execute a professional services contract and amend with GHD in the amount of 27,190 for the NPDES project. That concludes my staff report. Thank you, Merritt. Any questions or comments? Hearing none, we'll open public comment. Call 725-1484 if you want to comment on this item. All right, we did not receive any public comments, so we will close that portion and move on to a motion. Madam Mayor, I'd like to make a motion to authorize the city manager to execute a professional services contract amendment with GHD in the amount of $27,190 to complete special studies necessary for the National Pollution Discharge Elimination System Permit uh, Compliance Project. Second. Second. <laughs> we have a motion and a second. Sianna? Councilmember Glazer? Yes. Councilmember Johnson? Yes. Councilmember Stanfield? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Trent? Yes. Mayor Long? Yes. Thank you. We'll move on to our next item, which is to authorize the city manager to procure materials for Jamison Creek Fish Passage Improvements Project without competitive bidding and approve a supplemental budget request for $1 million, resolution 2020-13. So staff is recommending that the council adopt resolution 2020-13 and authorize the city manager to negotiate and purchase a specialty reinforced concrete box culvert pipe for the Jamison Creek Fish Passage Improvement Project prior to the construction contract being awarded. 
If approved, this will allow for the materials to arrive on site in a more timely manner and allow the construction of the contract to be completed on schedule. The Jamison Creek Fish Passage Project is currently out to bid for construction and includes a replacement of the culvert crossing beneath Ronerville Road. Bids are anticipated to be opened on April 29th and the contract for construction is expected to be awarded by the City Council on May 4th. It is anticipated that completing the contracting will take two to three weeks after the project is awarded and a notice to proceed will not be able to be issued until the beginning of June. Initially, staff had hoped that the project could be bid earlier in the year and the purchase of the culvert could be included as an item in the construction contract. However, it took time to finalize the grant agreement, gain property owner access agreements and obtain the project permits. And therefore the project timeline was extended uh, to the point we are now. The expected time required to manufacture and deliver the culvert is between six and 16 weeks. If the culverts are ordered during the first week of June, the soonest they would be delivered uh, would be late July and more likely delivery date would be early to mid August. So waiting till the contract awarded does not make sense at this time. Therefore staff is requesting the council find that it is in the interest of the public, interest of the city to negotiate for the purchase of the culvert directly with manufacturers and purchase a culvert for the project as soon as possible in accordance with section 2.50.70D of the Fortuna Municipal Code. The culverts could then be ordered and delivered as soon as the end of June and allow adequate time for the work to be completed with minimal interruption to traffic when Ambrosini School is back in session. Staff is requesting that the council authorize uh, this procurement with a not to exceed amount of $400,000. This project is fully funded through a Two grants, one from the California Department of Fish and Wildlife and the other from the Wildlife Consul Conservation Board in the amount of $2.7 million, roughly. The city is required to provide staff time as a match to manage a project in the amount of $6,000 and no cash match is required by the city. The project is included in the current budget as capital improvement project number 9374 and the construction phase of this project was anticipated to be completed originally in 2020 and 2021, and therefore the purchase of this culvert is not in the current year budget. The proposed supplemental budget request, which is attached to the staff report, will advance $1 million for the culvert purchase and construction to the current fiscal year to bring the total budget for 2019-2020 to $1.25 million and leave the remaining fund in next year's budget to pay for the remainder of the construction contract. The supplemental budget request is, is included with the staff report as attachment B, and the overall budget amount for this project will not be changed as a result of this request. Therefore, staff is recommending the council adopt resolution 2020-13 and approve a supplemental budget request in the amount of $1 million for the Jamison Creek Culvert Project. And that concludes my staff report. Thank you, Barrett. Does anyone have any comments or questions? I, got, I have a question. Jeremy? Uh, Mayor, I'm sure you already thought of this, but would you foresee any issues with the contractor not wanting to use our materials? Yeah, I think you always have a risk when you procure materials. Um, we have specified the type of culprit that we're getting, so I, I, we won't run into a situation where the, the contractor says, I don't want to use those materials. I think the biggest risk is that somehow something's wrong with how you order it and the dimension's wrong. but. We'll be working with our engineer who designed the project to assure that we ordered the proper culvert and that it'll be the right culvert uh, for the project. You may recall that we ended up doing this on the Hillside Creek project as well. We had to order aluminum culvert for that project and that worked out just fine. Okay, thanks. I have a question. Go ahead. I was just, Merritt, the uh, government code and our purchase policies allow us to purchase the pipe this way, but is there anything in the terms and conditions in the grant? Are we, are we sure we're compliant with all those by this mode of purchasing? Yeah, our deputy city engineer checked in with the granting agencies and confirmed that with them. And uh, I recall correctly, there, there may have been an amendment to move this up to the current year, but they're aware of our plans. They understand the timeliness of the project. So this, this was, um, we ran this by the granting agencies and we don't anticipate any problems there. Awesome, thanks. Any other comments or questions? 
Hearing none, we'll open it up for public comment. Once again, 725-1484. We received no public comment calls, so we'll move on to a motion. I'll make a motion to adopt resolution 2020-13 and read by title only and approve a supplemental budget request in the amount of $1 million. Second. Second. We have a motion and a second, Siana. Resolution 2020-13, a resolution of the City Council of the City of Fortuna, authorizing the City Manager to procure materials for the Jamison Creek Fish Passage Improvement Project without formal competitive bidding. Council Member Glazer? Yes. Council Member Johnson? Yes. Council Member Stanfield? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Trent? Yes. Mayor Long? Yes. Thank you. Our next item is to authorize the city manager to award the citywide striping and unsignalized intersection improvements project CIP 9382 GR Sunberg Inc. Merit, you're on mute. Thank you. Okay. So that is staff's recommendation. We are recommending that the project be awarded to GR Sunberg Inc. and establish a maximum contract amount of $310,000 and $800, which includes a 10% contingency. The project was publicly advertised, publicly advertised for bid on February 26, 2020, and the bid, bid period ended on March 26. The city received one bid from GR Sunberg Inc. for a total amount of $282,546. The bid amount exceeded the available construction budget. However, staff had submitted requests for additional funding to Caltrans to cover the funding shortfall, which was approved. GHD, our consultant managing construction for this project, has confirmed on the contractor state license board that GR Sunberg and their contractor's licenses are current and active and that GR Sunberg is not currently debarred from public bidding. This project is being funded from a highway by the Highway Safety Improvement Program grant administered by Caltrans and with city, under city fund number 273. The current budget, the 2019-20 budget for this project is 240,000, which includes both construction and construction engineering tasks. There's a table that outlines the costs and budget in the staff report. Staff requested an additional 111,000 from Caltrans to cover the anticipated construction shortfall and provide the contingency amount of 10%, which is approximately $25,000. If approved, the total project budget will be 351,800 with 310,800 for the construction contract and 41,000 for the construction engineering contract. No city match is required for this project. A copy of the draft notice of award to GR Sunberg and the supplemental budget request are attached. Uh, therefore, staff is recommending the council authorize the city manager to award the citywide striping and unsignalized intersection improvement project to GR Sunberg Inc. and establish a maximum contract construction contract amount of three hundred ten thousand eight hundred dollars, and authorize the city manager or his designee to execute the contract and other related documents, including the supplemental budget request. That concludes my staff report. Thank you, Merritt. Any questions or comments? Hearing none, we will open public comment, 725-1484.
we receive no public comment, so we'll close that public comment and move for a motion. Madam Mayor, I'll read the long ones for you. Okay. I'd like to make a motion to authorize the city manager to award the citywide striping and unsignalized intersection improvement project, GR Sunbrook Incorporated, and established a maximum contract amount, including 10% contingency of $310,800 and authorize the city manager or his designee to execute the contract and other related documents. I'll second. All right, we have a motion and a second, Siana. Council Member Glazer. Yes. Council Member Johnson. Yes. Council Member Stanfield. Yes. Yes. First M. Trent. Yes. Mayor Long. Yes. Thank you. Our next item is a public hearing to consider adopting the various rates and fees for city services, administration, parks, recreation, police and animal control, River Lodge and Monday Club, and transit fees within the city of Fortuna. Resolution 2020-10. Karen Felmley, our finance director, will be providing this staff report and the following staff report um, governing the fee schedule. Good evening, honorable mayor and city council. So before you, we have the public hearing to consider the adoption of the rates and fees for the administrative uh, fee schedule, the parks fee schedule, the recreation fee schedule, the police fee schedule, the River Lodge and Monday Club fee schedule, and the transit fee schedule. Uh, the proposed changes are mostly consi consistent of um, just some cleanup, as well as um, adding a couple of new fees for um, two new locations. So um, the administrative fee schedule has no proposed changes. The parks fee schedule, we are uh, proposing to decrease the deposit for reserving the Bocce Court area, since there's not a lot of um, things that could be damaged uh, in that area. Uh, and then we're also proposing to add a, a per day charge instead of just doing the hourly rate for uh, use of the recreation hall facility. We don't have any proposed changes for the recreation or police fee schedules. Um, and then under the River Lodge and Monday Club, in order to keep it consistent with how the parks and rec fee schedule is set up, we added section 1B, allowing for uh, fee exemptions to certain organizations and events at the Monday Club. And those really aren't anything, any new agreements. We just wanted to memorialize them within the fee schedule. And then we are also proposing to add a rental rate for the bar room at the River Lodge. And that used to be where the gift shop was. And so we're hoping to maximize our revenues for that uh, particular spot at the River Lodge um, by doing a rental rate for the bar room. Also adding a section at the River Lodge um, to memorialize the exempt organizations uh, and events. So that concludes my staff report. And if there are any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Are there any questions for Aaron? Hearing none, we'll open public comment 725-1484. And you're on. Uh, good evening, Walt Wilson again, resident of Fortuna. Um, I just thought it would be appropriate to welcome Aaron to the meeting and to thank him for his good work 
on all the rates and fees for all these city services, um, and uh, along with all the other good work that Aaron does for us here in Fortuna. So thank you, Aaron, and good night. Thanks, Walt. We'll wait another few seconds for anyone else, and then we'll move on. All right, we'll close our public comment and we need a motion. I'll make a motion to adopt resolution 2020-10 and read by title only. Second. We have a motion and a second, Siona. Resolution 2020-10. Resolution of the City of Fortuna establishing a schedule of fees and charges for administrative, parks, recreation, police, river lodge, and Monday Club, and transit within the City of Fortuna for fiscal year 2021. Council Member Glazer? Yes. Council Member Johnson? Yes. Council Member Stanfield? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Trent? Yes. Mayor Long? Yes. Our next item has to do with fees for builders and developers. So I'm going to zoom out of this meeting and Tammy, our mayor pro Tim, is going to take care of this item. Thank you, Sue. This item is a public hearing to consider, consider the adoption of various rates and fees for the city services, including building, community development, water and wastewater, and water and wastewater laboratory fees, resolution 2020-11. Aaron, report, please. Good evening again, Honorable Mayor Pro Tem and Council. So before you, we have uh, the proposed fee schedule for the building, community development, water and wastewater, and water and wastewater laboratory fees, as the Mayor Pro Tem said. We are originally planning on having a special uh, workshop with the Council to discuss our building fees, and we're going to propose a 5% increase and um, go through a presentation on, on um, why we thought that that was a good move for the city. However, staff has decided to um, take that out of this proposed fee schedule for the time being due to the COVID-19 pandemic and the economic fallout um, that is anticipated to, uh, to come from the pandemic. Staff uh, may consider to bring back this particular fee for discussion with the city council at a future date, depending on how the economy recovers over the course of the next six to 12 months. Um, but staff does not feel that this would be the right time to consider an increase to building services. And so that has been taken out. And so there are no proposed changes to the current building fee schedule. We are proposing uh, under community development fee schedule to add the short-term rental permit, which was just previously adopted by the council at this meeting, as well as add outside city limit connection to the water and wastewater systems special service fee. Under the water and wastewater fee schedule, we've changed the uh, summer bill calculation months. And that is really due to um, recently ha seeing a lot of customers submitting for um, for, uh, rain or for their bill to be adjusted because of leaks. Um, I, although, you know, we kind of have seen that those really aren't due to leaks. It's just due to them continually continuing to water um, during the month of October. And so we've we've switched um, the months that are our winter months are considered to be to start in November instead of October to hopefully uh, curb that. And then we're also proposing to increase the meter test fee, the tampering fee, and adding an insulation of sewer cleanout fees to our fee schedule. And then under the water and wastewater laboratory fees, we're proposing to increase the coliform quantity tray fee and remove the total dissolved solids fee. Um, if there are any questions for staff, I'd be happy to answer those. Otherwise, staff recommends to conduct the public hearing and adopt the various rates and fees for the building department, community development department, water and wastewater department, and the laboratory department. Thank you, Aaron. Any questions from council? OK, 
Okay, if not, we'll open it up to public comment. The number seven two five one four eight four. What happened? What happened? Seeing no public comment, do I have a motion? Make a motion we adopt resolution 2020 11, read by title only. Second the motion. We have a motion and a second. Sienna? Resolution 2020 11, a resolution of the city of Fortuna. Establishing a schedule of fees for building, community development, water and wastewater, and water and wastewater laboratory fees within the city of Fortuna for fiscal year 2020-2021. Councilmember Glazer? Yes. Councilmember Johnson? Yes. Councilmember Stanfield? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Trent? Yes. Thank you, Sianna. Welcome back, Sue. Okay, we have one more item under our business. It is establish a business resilience, resiliency emergency loan program in response to COVID-19. Resolution 2020-14. So staff is recommending that the city council adopt this resolution, which creates an emergency business loan fund for a rapid response to COVID-19 impacts on local businesses. COVID-19 has already had a negative impact on businesses throughout the region and in Fortuna. And to respond to this, regional economic development professionals, including the city of Fortuna staff and EPID have come together and others have come together to address resiliency measures. A rapid emergency line of capital is one of the needs that were identified by the group. The goal is to develop a regional effort and approach for bridge financing to assist hard hit businesses is still in development. This resolution will establish a program that could be used initially and in, it could be used initially and independently in Fortuna. It also allows the city manager to expand the program to add regional modules as they become available. The state and federal programs that are being developed to address the impacts of business are developing concurrently. However, these programs are still not providing the funds that businesses need as quickly as they are needed. Meanwhile, businesses will be making hard decisions as the capital runs out. The sooner resources can be brought to bear on the situation, the more effective the response will be. The program established by this resolution would provide an effective rapid response to bridge business capital needs until other resources are available. Some of the administrative details how the project would be implemented are still unclear. However, at this point I anticipate, rather than in the guidelines included with the staff report, that we would be working with Redwood Region Economic Development Condition rather than the Arcata Economic Development Condition. The city has an existing relationship and is a member of REDEC, which is the Redwood Region Ec Economic Development Commission and is a member of the JPA. Mayor Long sits on the board and provides oversight to that organization. As we envision it, the city would provide its funds from Fund 836, the business loan fund, to REDEC, and REDEC would underwrite and service the loans. Um, it's possible there are, there are other sources of funding within the community, such as from the Headwaters Fund and from the Humboldt Area Foundation, so it's possible that REDEC could couple the funds that are being contributed by the city with some of those other funds that are available and while they're available. So the city would end up funding anywhere between 25% and 100% of the loan amount to the businesses. The loans would accrue 2.5% interest over a 66 month term, which is five and a half years, and no payments would be due for the first six months, which would hopefully get the business back on their feet and allow them to make payments after this emergency has subsided. It is our hope in the long term that the federal programs would become available and more regularly utilized by our businesses. Some of those programs include the SBA Paycheck Protection Program and the Economic Injury and Disaster Loans Program, which provides up to a $10,000 grant that would be issued to businesses. REDEC will be directing business uh, businesses that are, are having difficulties to the Humble um, Small Business Development Council and in, in, in directing them to get consultation and assist businesses with navigating the downturn. 
The city has approximately $500,000 available in the business loan fund, which could be budgeted to fund resiliency and emergency, this business resiliency and emergency loan program. But at this time, we only are anticipating and asking that we use $150,000 of that fund. A copy of the resolution, the guidelines for the program, and the application form are attached with the one noted change that rather than um, AEDC, we would be using REDEC to service and underwrite the loans. Staff is recommending that the council adopt this resolution and create the emergency business loan fund for a rapid response to this emergency and to help our local businesses. So, you know, I just think this is a really important one. Um, and I'd also like to thank um, our EFPA director, Diana Rios. She's really been talking with a lot of the businesses and relaying their needs. So she's going to be um, a, a, a partner in helping to screen some of these applications and helping uh, the city to communicate with those businesses. So it's it's going to be a team effort, also working with REDEC. And it's our hope that through this program, we'll be able to help businesses through this time, keep them on their feet so that they can be long-term contributors to the city and be able to um, continue their business function into the future. So that concludes my staff report. I'd be happy to answer any questions. Thank you, Merritt. Does it have any questions? No. Seeing none, you. we'll open it to public comment. All right, you're on. Hi, everyone. Diana Leos with the Fortuna Business Improvement District. And thank you for doing the council meeting uh, online so that way we can watch it and we can take part. We appreciate staff. Uh, I know the phone calls in, so thank you so much for that. Um, and the Chamber of Commerce, we've been seeing during this. So Renee from the Chamber also says thank you so much on her behalf. Um, city staff has been great in working with um, the bid and the Chamber while we um, work with our community and our businesses. And I just wanted to um, just to let you know that we are totally in 100% in support of this um, this city council item and that if any, anybody has questions, we're here to um, be a part of that. Um, we're facilitating phone calls all day and um, starting at 7.15 this morning and um, asking um, how, how to get funding and where do I start and um, what can the city do for me? And so um, we're, we're getting them to other leaders and other funding sources, but this will be something that's immediate or close but immediate to keep our businesses operating. So we really appreciate um, your consideration on this item. And that's all I have. Thank you, Diana. We'll wait a few more seconds to see if anyone else calls in. All right, we'll close public comment and move on to our motion. I'll make a motion Actually, for resolution 2020-14. I, I'm sorry, I have a question after all. That's okay, go ahead. Um, I was curious to know the timing of the underwriting for this and how fast people can apply and be approved. So I think the timing is pretty quick. I talked to Greg Foster, the director with REDEC, and I think he said he did five of them or nine of them so far this week. So I, I think they are going pretty quickly. If you see the application form from the city side, which will do a preliminary screening, it's a pretty brief form. Um, I received an application form from um, 
from REDEC that they typically provide. It's a it's a, an abbreviated form. Um, so I think as I think these loans can be issued very quickly, um, provided that the application is turned in complete within a few days. Great, thank you. And I just wanted to, to comment, thank you, Diana, for mentioning the chamber. We've also been working with Renee Lindsay at the chamber and we'll be leaning on her also to help outreach to our businesses and act like a liaison and, and to provide some assistance to administer this program and provide input. All right, we have a motion. Are there any other, any other questions or a second? I'll second. We have a motion and a second, Siana. Resolution 2020-14, a resolution of the City Council of the City of Fortuna, establishing a business resiliency emergency loan program in response to COVID-19. Council Member Glazer? Yes. Council Member Johnson? Yes. Council Member Stanfield? Yes. Mayor Tem Trent? Pro Tem Trent? Sorry, I didn't hear you. Yes. Okay. Mayor Long? Yes. Thank you. That concludes our business items and we'll move on to our city manager's report. Okay, so in, until further notice, all of our meetings will be held via teleconference in a platform similar to the one that we have now. Our next regular council meeting is scheduled for April 20th. Um, our next planning commission is on April 14th and our measure E regular meeting is tomorrow on April 7th. And that meeting will not be televised, but it will be broadcast and we will be looking for input from our city clerk if she has figured out how that will be available for viewing um, after my report if she has input there. Um, and then the next Rona Rec District meeting will be on May 6th. A lot of um, my recent focus has been in responding to the, the COVID emergency. There's been a, a lot that's been required both from the human resources side and interpreting things like the new leave requirements mandated by the federal government as well as developing a comprehensive emergency response plan for the city and, and operating, op in implementing operational changes to protect our employees. Um, much of what I've currently been working on, it was a, it was a, a packed agenda, um, and, and a lot of that's on the agenda tonight. I would just like to say we've had some questions, and our police department has been doing their best to work with businesses and answer questions mm -hmm. about whether or not what are essential businesses. I would just put it out there to the community that they can call Humboldt County OES at 268-2527 if they have questions about essential businesses and which businesses should be operating and how they should be operating. And to call the Public Health County Humboldt, County Humboldt Department of Public Health hotline at 441-5000 if you have public health questions about the coronavirus. So with that, that concludes my staff report. Um, I'd be happy to answer any additional questions. Anyone have any questions for Merritt? Can you give those two phone numbers time? Yeah, County of Public Health, 707-441-5000. And the County OES for ascent business, which businesses are essential, questions such as that, 707-268-2527. Thank you. Merritt, yes. our next item is future agenda items. Anything? I have something, but it's not necessarily an agenda item. It's now that we have this pandemic and shelter in place order, um, a lot of our senior services are no longer in use. And some of the seniors may run the risk of falling through the cracks or, um, not having stuff they need or just not being checked on. And I was wondering perhaps staff could look into the feasibility maybe of reinstituting the are you okay phone call if that's still available and still something that can be done. Um, just something that came to mind the other day when just some friends of mine and different things happening. But the senior center is no long is not able to operate. The Humboldt Senior Resource Center isn't able to operate, and some people may just have a tendency to slip through the cracks because they're not real active or vocal. Just just an idea. 
Okay, um, and one of the things that I just offer in response to that, sorry, Mayor Long, I'll, if you had a- No, go ahead, go ahead, I'll finish after you. It, it, is that our uh, Fortuna Transit um, has been providing some assistance, um, as I believe I mentioned earlier, and so some instances they've actually been able to act as a courier and bring food or medicine to people. And we've had pretty light traffic for our senior bus, so I think if there are seniors that need something, that that's also a pretty good place to start if they if there's you know the there's not other senior services that are available and people are stuck in their home either they need transportation or potentially food or medical supplies that that we will help find them help if they call a transit department. That's a good thing, but some people may not even be able to just just an idea about the are you okay? It was an auto dialer and didn't require a lot of staff time and. If, and I can check back with our police. They administered that. I don't know the status. I know they discontinued it, but I can look back into that and I'll, I will report back at the next council meeting or sooner. Awesome. And that's a, it's a good thing that we're able to help fill a transportation and material goods uh, with the senior bus. That's a great thing. So I have some more information on that, Mike, that I'll cover in my report at the end. Okay. All right, so council reports, uh, Dean. Hang on, I'm back. Thanks, Madam Mayor. Um, Red Coast Energy Authority, like us, is gonna be, have to do virtual meetings. I have nothing to report. Uh, I haven't attended the last couple of months due to other factors. Um, I did wanna make a positive mention of um, a local business and some residents that are actually making face mask protection for our medical staff locally, um, taking it upon themselves to do that. Um, you people have stepped up and it's truly amazing. And I wanna thank you. Um, for the people that are involved in our community with essential services, this applies to our city as well as in Eureka, where they shop, um, groceries, pharmacies, um, drug stores, the people that have never in the past, other than knowing full well that the flu season's coming and they can actually have somebody breathe on them, um, they've been put in harm's way as well. You people need to be recognized for what you're doing. Medical professionals, hospital staff, EMTs, police, fire department, you're all being put into harm's way. You need to know that we appreciate what you're doing. We want you to be safe. Um, if the act has been recommended, recommended by the CDC that everybody start wearing a face mask, um, go on to youtube.com and put in make face mask. You can actually make them for almost no cost. So it shouldn't be an issue where somebody can't make one, they can actually make some kind of cover. Since this shelter in place started in March 16th, um, you might as well say today, today is the 21st day of shelter in place. Um, I think everybody is going crazy, uh, stir crazy, and, and in some instances actually breaking from what has been suggested by the Department of Health and Human Services to comply. Um, for those people that are not taking this serious, you have to understand that because of your non-compliance, you may actually forcefully extend the duration of time the rest of us that are complying to have to be in sheltered in place. So the whole goal is who's the weakest link? Everybody needs to be a strong portion of that chain. No one needs to be the, the weakest link. So please, for all of our benefits, take this serious. If your parents that have children and teenagers, tell them the same thing. They're not supposed to be wandering around like little jackals. You know, not taking it serious. It has to be considered to be a serious issue. Um, God bless America. God bless our troops. When 9-11 came into play, one of the slogans we had uh, that we universally stated was, united we stand. You need to have that as your mantra for what we're going through right now. So please, let's get this over with and save lives and be able to go back to our normal way of life. Thanks, Madam Mayor. 
Thank you, Dean. Mike? Uh, thank you, Dean, for those words of encouragement and uh, direction for those that maybe don't always follow the, the uh, directions of the health department. Um, I attended virtually, much as we are here, the uh, Transportation, Communication, and Public Works Policy Committee meeting with the League of California Cities. And uh, one of the big items on there is the Rule 20A with the Public Utilities Commission. Um, we just completed a project. Well, it's not quite complete, but it's 95% complete. We're waiting for AT&T and Sunlink. But their proposal with the Public Utilities Commission is to sunset the Rule 20 uh, program and 10 years from the date of the adoption of the rule to sunset it. And the public comment is being accepted until April 21st with the uh, Public Utilities Commission. I don't have the address, or, but I can look it up. Uh, but I think it's an important thing for undergrounding, whether it's for fire or for uh, public safety and a transportation corridor or just to clean up a messy bunch of lines and get them undergrounded. Uh, another thing is that the FPPC has uh, decided that our Form 700s don't have to be turned in until June 1st now. I suspect that most of us have already turned all ours in by April 1st, but for those that hadn't made the April 1st deadline, the new deadline is June 1st. Um, another thing that I found out about is that we need to, even though we don't have not necessarily had a lot of them, but we need to institute a program for streamlining the permitting of electric vehicle charging stations. And I suspect that Dean may have heard a little bit about that with the uh, RCEA, but it is AB 2168. And uh, we don't have a uh, HCOG meeting as of yet, or how we're going to do that. <laughs> I suspect it'll be coming soon. And uh, there is a webinar coming up and a conference call with CalPERS for uh, the fund balance and information that probably Aaron has already uh, to my notes from the League of California Cities says that it's on April 8th, but I believe I read someplace else that it was moved to April 15th from 10 to 1130. And with that, um, I already said I echoed Dean's comments and brought up the seniors. So with that, I would just say that uh, we're all hoping and praying for a quick end to this and to get back to what will be our new normal, I'm afraid. So I thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Mike. Jeremy? Uh, I have nothing to report regarding my committee commitments. Uh, just want to reiterate the sentiments of my other council. Uh, just everybody be safe and shelter in place, take care of your families and your and yourselves, and just uh, be sure to heed the, the advice and the counsel of our uh, sheriff and our local health official and do your best to be <clears throat> the uh, flattest part of the curve. Thanks. Thank you, Jeremy. Pammy? First of all, thank you, Dean. You said a lot of what all of the council wanted to say, so we appreciate that. A lot of emotion in that. Um, secondly, my Humboldt Transit Authority meeting was canceled, but I did talk to Greg to see what they were doing to protect the bus drivers. The buses now, everybody enters through the back of the bus. All bus rides are free for the time being. The bus driver is completely sheltered off from the rest of the the bus, which is really good. And some of them are even wearing masks, which everybody should be. So I'm glad to see they're protected. Um, I did have the same type of meeting, a WebEx meeting with the League of California Cities for my public safety committee. 
meeting and there wasn't a lot on on that agenda but it was actually nice not to have to consider flying to get to that meeting so that was good and i just want you know everybody to stay safe take care of your families try to distance yourself and let's get this over and move on i'm one of those people who are not working <laughs> this so i've spent my time looking for grants for the police station and you know, different stuff like that, trying to find something to do. So anyway, everybody stay safe. Thank you. Thank you, Tammy. So I've been getting a lot of emails reflecting uh, different groups wanting ordinances to stop evictions, ordinances to protect renters, ordinances to do a lot of different things in the city. And so far, most of those requests have been um, issued by the governor. So that kind of covers the city of Fortuna. So I don't really feel like we need to adopt a lot of resolutions and proclamations when the governor has already mandated it throughout the state. So for those of you who are wondering about those things, that's already taken care of. Um, I've spent a lot of time on conference calls with the governor's office and with the California League of California Cities getting updates on everything. And uh, I think all of you get that same information. So if you wanna sit on some of those conference calls, sometimes they're informative, sometimes not so much, but at least you kind of get a feel for what's out there and information that's being passed around. Um, Mike, I'm talking to you about your seniors or anyone else in Fortuna that might need um, checked on. I got an email from the fire department as part of a CERT team. And so they are supposed to be getting um, some kind of organized plan for people who have signed up in that CERT program to do well check calls. So I'm waiting to hear back on what that looks like and uh, you know what that entails and it's all gonna be by phone. So if anyone else is interested in participating in that, when I get the information, I can pass it on to you as well. So I think awesome. that could be a really good program to help mm -hmm. with our um, any of our citizens who are feeling you know shut in can't get out and get what they need. So I'll keep you posted on that as I get posted on that. Thank you. So, you know, like everyone has said, don't be too hard on yourself. Don't be judgmental. Don't hoard all the toilet paper. <laughs> Reach out to you. <laughs> be supportive of each other. Be kind. Be creative. I don't know if you've heard of Howling and Humble. Look it up on Facebook. Pretty interesting. It's kind of crazy, but hey, kind of fun too. So. Be creative, be patient, be strong. We got this. Good night. Need a motion. Motion oh. to adjourn. <laughs> I was saying good night. Go Tammy. <laughs> second. <laughs> All right, we have a motion and a second to adjourn. Siana, do we need roll call on this one? We'll do it. Okay. Council member Glazer. Oh, I'm going to hold off and stall for a while and enjoy this moment. Okay, yes. Councilmember Johnson. Absolutely. Councilmember. <laughs> yes. Mayor Pro Tem Trent. Yes. Mayor Long. Yes. Great job, everybody.